So you have a very, very disgruntled, as they are describing, Army veteran who was arrested with a AR-15 and unregistered ammunition near Kamala Harris's official residence um, at the U.S. Naval Observatory on Wednesday, March the 17th. So being identified as Paul Murray of San Antonio, Texas. Um, they say he is now facing several counts of weapons charges for being in possession of an AR-15, 113 rounds of unregistered ammunition, and five round, uh, 30 round magazines, okay? So they say the charges include carrying a dangerous weapon, carrying a rifle or shotgun outside of a business possession of unregistered ammunition, and possession of a large capacity ammunition feeding device. So they said that he was subject to a criminal uh, intelligence bulletin uh, from College Station, Texas, um, that was issued March the 10th. They said the bulletin details, you know, his erratic behavior. The police say he went, uh, you know, to the station and complained, you know, he's not getting enough support from the VA or local police. On March the 1st, they filed it by a visit on March the 3rd, during which, you know, he said that he didn't want to hurt himself, but might hurt someone else if it was justified. Now, you know, keep that in mind. So it says the report also states that Murray believed that he was drugged or poisoned while on a recent trip to Japan. It said he was discharged from the army for schizophrenia, but no longer took his medication. So he used to be a drone operator and he was on the police radar because of that bulletin. Now they said the police responded in DC um, to you know him being around at 12, 12 p.m. Um, on the block of 3400 Massachusetts Avenue. Um, they were saying that um, when they found the car, you know, that he was in, um, that's when they found the weapons and the ammunition. Now Kamala Harris was not home at the time, neither was her husband, because Kamala was doing uh, virtual meetings and things like that um, in her particular duties as a vice president. But he said that he wanted to hurt someone else and if he felt it was justified. He also told his mother that he was going to Washington to take care of his problem. And obviously his problem was Kamala Harris, and he felt that if he could do something to her, it would be justified. And I guarantee you, I mean, what, what part of Kamala he's attacking? Is he attacking the Asian side of uh, Kamala or you know the Jamaican side of Kamala? What side is he gonna attack? I mean. I don't know, is this a potential attack against Asians in this story? Cause since Kamala, you know, for years have never called herself black. She always said she was Asian and she is Asian. I mean, her mother's Indian, so her, she's Asian. I mean, I, that's, that's nothing I'm gonna argue about. Um, you know, the sister girl talk only comes when it's time to talk in politics. So I'm trying to decide, I mean, is this a, you know, attack against Asians or potential attack against Asians or, you know, are we being black today? I'm just trying to figure that out. And like I said, don't, you know, say nothing to me because I'm just going off of what she has identified herself as. If she said, hey, I'm a black woman, that's exactly what I am, never identified as Asian, then I wouldn't even be, you know, asking that particular question. But at the end of the day, whether she identifies as black or Asian, the white supremacists like neither, okay? They like neither. You now people better understand the white supremacist is the enemy of the people. They, they are, you know, the white supremacist is the ones that are, has spearheaded all the misery and pain throughout the world. You know, the, uh, the killing of different Asian groups, black groups, they did it, you know, and, and they always try to, you know, shift blame and, and scapegoat. But you know, they, they, they kind of quiet about this story that you had this guy that literally was going to fit, do something, you know, in his mind to take care of his problem. And he's told the police, I'm gonna harm someone if I feel it's justified. See, that's that's white supremacy for you. A, a, a Mazungu can go to the police station, tell them, I feel I'm gonna hurt somebody if I feel it's justified. And he walks away from there. He walks away. He's not even put, you know, not even detained not even putting a psych war or anything. He's telling you he about to go do something and you're like, oh, well, you know, we'll put a bulletin out about him just to keep an eye on him. Now imagine if a black man went in there and said that. The exact same words. Oh, they would have found something to lock him up on. So he wouldn't quote unquote hurt people. He made a threat that he was gonna hurt people. He felt it was justified. So we just had to detain him 
and, and figure out his, his, his issue. He's been locked up for days. But leave me a comment. Let me know think about the situation, you know, with this story with um, Kamala basically having a, uh, a domestic terrorist, you know, showing up at her front doorstep um, with AR-15 and over 100 rounds of ammunition. In the mainstream media, this is why I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the black media is important. We will cover the stories that they're trying to hide and break up their propaganda by waging war against it. And also, if you have not done that, download our African Diaspora News Channel app in the App Store and Google Play.